Hi and welcome to my OCR AA Level Biology Revision Session with me, Christine. So today's lesson, I want to look at principles of homeostasis. So let's just figure out what homeostasis is then. So homeostasis is the regulation of the internal environment. So what we want to do is we want to maintain our internal environment within a very narrow limit. So this is where we have very small fluctuations which are going to occur in our body but they are maintained within a small range. Now, there are things like our water levels for osmoregulation, our glucose regulation, our carbon dioxide concentration, and our temperature regulation, so thermoregulation. So how does our body know about these internal environments? Well, it's to do with the sensory receptors. So I have done a whole video on sensory receptors, but just to remind you, Sensory receptors are basically groups of differentiated cells that are there to detect changes in the environment. And those changes are called the stimuli. They will then pass on that information to what's known as the coordination center. Now that's things like your brain, your spinal cord, it can also be your pancreas. Now the coordination center will receive this information, process the information from those receptors, and then it will then pass the information on to an effector and your effector is going to respond. Now that's going to bring about a change. Now the effectors are normally your muscles or your glands. So muscles will either contract or relax and your glands will be able to secrete the substance for which they are differentiated to make. So to understand homeostasis, the one that we talk about the most in this topic area is negative feedback. So negative feedback is a loop where if there is an initial stimulus, whatever that stimulus is, it's going to provoke a response. So let's just remind ourselves here, our stimulus needs to be detected by our sensory receptors. Our sensory receptor is going to pass that information on to the coordination center and the coordination center is going to pass that on to the effector. What's then going to happen is to restore the balance with negative feedback, we need to reduce the magnitude of that stimulus. We need to bring the system back to normal. We need to take it and reverse it from whatever that stimulus was. So if something increases, we need to decrease it. If something decreases, we need to increase it. So we are bringing the system back to normal through the process of negative feedback. Now you also have to know about positive feedback. So with positive feedback, this is where the response tends to intensify the original stimulus. So again, sensory receptors, coordination centers, effector, but this time we are going to push the system further in the same direction as what the stimulus was. And the one that your teachers love to talk about when it comes to positive feedback is, for example, contractions in the uterine wall oxytocin causing more contractions for childbirth. But let's just look at some examples of one negative feedback and the positive feedback. So negative feedback is very important for thermoregulation and I have done a whole video that covers this in more detail. But just having a quick look here, we can see that our blood temperature should be maintained between 36.4 to 37.6, a very narrow limit. If our blood temperature rises, our hypothalamus starts a cooling mechanism, our blood temperature is going to be lowered back down. If our blood temperature lowers, our hypothalamus starts warming and the mechanisms that need to warm us back up again, our blood temperature rises up, we have reversed the stimulus. So this is a form of negative feedback because we are showing the reversal. The stimulus, the blood temperature rising, the blood temperature response is that it's going to be lowered blood temperature lowers, the response is that the blood temperature is going to rise. So the positive feedback system then, I have spoke about the fact of contractions. Well, there's two others which are really important when it comes to your exam. One where they'll link it to module four and they'll talk about the fact of a fever. So what is a fever? You have an infection. That infection means that cytokines, chemical signals are released. Those chemical signals signal there's my stimulus, for the hypothalamus to raise my body temperature. It does that by increased metabolic rate and muscle activity, shivering. Well, what's going to happen? We're going to 
further increase the body temperature. We are going to loop back, intensify that original stimulus, and by intensifying the original stimulus, we get what's known as a fever. And that's the body's way in responding to a pathogen that has got in. Now, why is a fever important? Well, what's happened is the hypothalamus thermoset level has been increased so that the body is signaling that we are cold because the therm that narrow limit that we had before has been raised. Therefore, the body is going to respond in the way as if our body temperature has dropped below that normal level. That's a fever and that's a way in which we are using positive feedback to ensure that we can fight off the infection. So that's one of the positive feedback mechanisms. The other one is the propagation of action potential. So you'll learn about this in neuronal communication. What happens? Sodiums are going to influx into the axon. The membrane becomes depolarized. Because of that, voltage-gated sodium channels are going to open. What does that mean? There's an increased influx of sodium ions. We have, therefore, further increase that stimulus. We have intensified the original stimulus, which was our sodium influx. So these are two prime examples of positive feedback systems, which are useful in the body. One, for fighting infection, module four, and two, for ensuring our neurons can propagate the action potential all the way down to keep that communication going. So I hope you've liked this video and if you have then please do click on my like button and subscribe to my channel so I can keep making these videos and resources for you. Also if you haven't done so already please do check out my revision platform www.aiqchat.com.